What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to compile your own World of Warcraft Cataclysm patch 4.3.4 server using Debian Linux. This is a follow-up guide to my Windows-based Cataclysm server video. I will have a link for that in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. We will be using the Cataclysm Preservation Project, which is based on the Trinity Core project. As you can see here, here is the GitHub page for it that has all sorts of good information on here and you can certainly reference it for anything in regards to questions that you may have. You can also check out their Discord channel if you have any further questions. On the server front, at this current time, even though Debian 12 Bookworm just came out, it is not compatible with this project. For this video, I will be doing this all in Debian 11.7 Bullseye. If the dependency applications do get updated to play nice with Debian 12 Bookworm, then I will mention it in the description of this video at a later time. If you do need help installing Debian 11 Bullseye, I will have a link for my video guide on that down below as well. In regards for hardware requirements, my recommendations are as follows. Two CPU cores as a minimum, but my recommended amount is four cores to help speed up the compiling process. Eight gigabytes of RAM, 50 gigabytes of hard drive storage space, and a 100 megabit NIC. If you haven't seen my other Linux-based project videos, I include a commands text document so that you can literally follow along with the exact copying and pasting I do, as you can see here on the right. To me, it makes going through this whole process much easier, and you shouldn't have to guess at what I did. I'll have a link for it listed below as well. Alright, let's begin. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and up ourselves to the root account for admin rights. So I'm just going to type in su, aka line one to start, hit enter, go ahead and type in your root password. Next thing we're going to do is go to line three here, which is this sudo editor equals nano sudo. And what we're essentially doing is we are going to make it so that the Deathwing account that I created, now you can of course create any account that you want by name, but the account I'm using is called Deathwing. So no big deal if you wanted to customize it to something else. So we're gonna go ahead and use the down arrow to get us down to the user privilege specification section here. So we'll bring it right below root. And then I'm gonna actually hit enter to create another space up arrow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in. And as I mentioned, if you had a different username, then just go ahead and put that username in here and then copy this bit out here. Paste that in, so it should look like that. And then do Control and the letter O to write it out. Hit Enter, and then Control X is an X-ray to exit out of that. The next thing we want to do on line seven here is we want to double check our sources list for the operating system. So I'm gonna paste line seven in and hit Enter. And so what we want to make sure is that anything that says Deb CD ROM on it is actually commented out by putting a pound sign in front of it. So this one here, let's go ahead and put a pound sign so it turns blue. Control O to write it out, hit enter, Control X to exit out. This essentially makes it so that anytime we are pulling any sort of apt get install commands that it's not asking for the installation media and that it's actually just strictly calling out to the Debian mirror repositories to pull down all those applications. One thing to reference here is any section, as you see in line nine here, that has brackets on it, it's just there as a statement mentioning what we are going to do next. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and turn off automatic updates as automatic updates for the operating system can go ahead and botch things. So it's best to do the updates on your terms, which of course I always recommend trying to keep up with updates when you can. Even though it's Linux based, it can still get viruses and all that good stuff. So line 11 here, we're going to go ahead and stop the automatic updates, hit enter, and then line 13, we are going to go ahead and now disable it. So line 13, copy that in, paste it in, hit enter. It is now disabled. Line 15 here, since we did all sorts of alterations to permissions and stuff like that, I just recommend doing a reboot of your server before we begin. So I'm going to go ahead and copy in line 15 hit and then hit enter and when it is back up then we will continue on the video all right we are back so now we are moving on to line 17 here where it mentions building the core server 
This section here for line 19 is just mentioning to double check the latest version of this link right here. And so if you click here to see what the versions it mentions, and then you can just change out the version numbers here if things haven't changed too dramatically, and then just copy and paste it right in. So lines 21 and 22, we are going to go ahead and copy and paste in and hit enter, type in my password. All right, now that is done, we are going to do this bulk pull here of all the dependency applications that we need. So it's gonna do a sudo apt get update and that's gonna go ahead and do a sudo apt get install of all these dependency applications here. So we'll copy lines 24 to 26, copy and paste those in and hit enter. And this is gonna be a fair amount of stuff, so just be patient, let it crunch. It's gonna download and install all the stuff so it could take some time. So for the MySQL community server portion here, it's going to ask you to enter in a root password. So this is a root password for the SQL root account, not the password for your server's root account. So go ahead and type in a password that you'll remember here. And it's gonna ask you to re-enter the password. And then you're gonna have this option here where it mentions use strong password encryption recommended or use the legacy authentication method to retain MySQL 5.x compatibility. We can use the strong password encryption for this project. Hit enter, let it keep crunching. All right, that is done. Key thing to look for here is these two lines here where it mentions update alternatives to make sure that Clang is in fact happy here and it's not giving any errors. Usually the only time I run into an issue here is just due to permissions and that it's not actually using sudo commands to go ahead and actually initiate those processes. So moving on, let's go to line 28 and copy the change directory to the opt directory. Hit enter. Next, we are going to go ahead and pull down the data from the Git repository here for the project. So line 30, go ahead and copy and paste that in. Just be patient as it pulls all this information in. Could take a moment. All right, next up, we are going to go ahead and make the opt Trinity Core build directory. And then we're gonna go ahead and change the directory to that build folder. So line 32, let's copy this and paste it in, hit enter. Next, we're gonna use line 34, which is going to get us into CMake territory here. Paste that in. The key thing to look at here is that nothing is read. There's no major errors or anything of that sort. Next up, we're gonna use line 36. So line 36 is actually gonna start the compiling process and it is set to use all CPU cores and threads. You don't have to guess how many you've got. It's just gonna go ahead and use all of them with this command right here. So let's copy line 36 and paste it in and hit enter. And then this is of course going to take quite a bit of time. So step away, go for a little breather, expect about 15 to 20 minutes is how long it's gonna to take to crunch this and just be patient. It all of course depends on your computer's hardware, just hands off, let it work its magic here, and we'll be back when it is done. All right, now the compiling is complete here. We should have hit 100%, and there shouldn't be any major obstacles that we would see here, so everything looks okay. So let's go ahead and copy in line 38 here for the sudo make install. Paste that in, hit enter. Go ahead and type in your password. All right, next up is line 40. We're going to go ahead and change the directory here to the etc. folder. And now we're gonna go ahead and drop the .dist off of the bnet server and the world server comp files here. Paste those in. Next up, we are going to edit the bnet server comp file here. And then line 47, let's go ahead and copy this. And over here, I am going to move the cursor all the way down to this logs directory here. And then we will paste it right in between the quotes. So we've got the logs directory here. One thing to note is that if we page down to this section here, so we're gonna go ahead and leave the username and password for the SQL database to be Trinity Trinity here. However, if you want to change the username and the SQL password, you would do it in this file. And we're going to also potentially have the option to do it 
in the next section as well. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But like I said, for the demonstration of this video, I will not be changing this. Should you want to, you need to do it in this file here. So we're going to go ahead and do control O to write out control X to exit. Next, we will do line 49, copy the world server.comp file in, hit enter. And then I'm going to copy line 51. And then I am going to page down. And then we're looking for this data directory here. So let's go ahead and move our cursor down. And let's delete the period and then paste it in. And again, make sure it's in between the quotes. And let's do the same for the logs here. So for the logs directory, let's move down. And I'm just down arrowing here. And then usually highlighting over the last quote there, we can paste it right in between. And again, as I'd mentioned, this is also the other configuration file that would have to be adjusted if you change your SQL user and its password to anything other than this. So these would be the sections here. Anyhow, we can go ahead and control O to write out control X to exit. Next, we're actually going to make the logs folder. So we're going to copy in line 55, paste it in, hit enter. Let me scroll down here. All right, next up, let's copy in line 57, paste it in. And this is where it's going to get a little wonky here. Currently, this file is not a direct link. And so we actually need to download it in a browser and then we can continue on. So we have to go into the GUI portion of the server to continue on. I have this optional piece here for line 60, which mentions creating a server file.txt file, which is going to have this link in it. I am going to do that to make it easier, at least for me. Like I said, it's completely optional. And then we just copy in line 63, paste it in here, control O, control X. Now what we'll do is I will jump onto my virtual machine and we'll just go ahead and quickly download this file here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and log in. All right, so we'll go up to activities in the top left, go down to files, go to other locations, computer, the opt directory, Trinity core, expand that out. And then we'll go to server and the server file here. And then I'm just going to copy this. And then we will go back to the top left activities, click on Firefox, paste it right in here. Look at all that nice clickbait here. Hit enter and it's going to download. Now that that is done, we can go ahead and jump back to the terminal. So I will see you back there. All right. And one thing for reference at some point, if this URL does become a permanent link that we can use the wget command on, then I will update this document and make a note that you can just skip over this entire section. But for today, that's how we have to do it. Next up, let's go ahead and copy line 65 out. So this is going to copy the CATA server data seven zip file into the opt Trinity core server folder Hit enter. And it could take a moment to move as it is a pretty good size file. In this case, it was pretty fast. Next, we will do line 67, copy and paste this in, and then just be patient as this is a huge amount of data. All right, the extraction is complete here. Everything looks good. Let's do line 69 through 73, which is just gonna do some cleaning up to get rid of essentially the CATA space server space data file and then just make it clean. Line 69 to 73, we're just going to go ahead and move the cameras, DBC maps, M maps, and V maps all directly just into the data folder here because we are going to clean things up to get rid of this CATA space server space data folder for housekeeping purposes. So we'll copy line 69 to 73, paste that in hit enter and just be patient as it moves the data over. All right, now that is done. Let's move on to line 75 to and 76 here. So we are getting rid of the seven zip file here for housekeeping purposes. And we are also getting rid of that CATA space server space data directory as well. Paste that in, hit enter. All right, 
Next up, line 79 is just mentioning that at this point we are setting up the databases. First thing we want to do is copy in line 81, which is going to check the MySQL server status. Hit enter. What we're just looking for here is that this is active. If the terminal window is not at a ready state here, you can go ahead and do line 83 here. Just type in Q and hit enter, and it will get you back to the terminal portion here. So let's copy in line 85, paste that in, hit enter, type in your password that you would have set for the root SQL account. And so we'll copy lines 89 to 87 here, which is going to create the Trinity user and also assign it the password of Trinity and also assign it a series of permissions. Paste this in, hit enter. That all looks good. Now we are going to manually create some databases here. So lines 91 to 94. Now there are scripts involved later on that will attempt to create these, but I found it's easier to create them ourselves and then move some data into them to make it into a cleaner experience. So line 91 to 94, copy this in, paste it in, hit enter. Okay, so now these databases exist. So auth characters, world, and hotfixes now exists. Let's go ahead and do line 96, which is exit. I'm just gonna type it in here. Next, we are going to change the directory to opt Trinity core server bin. So line 98, copy that in, paste it in, hit enter. And now we are going to pull down the latest world database here. So we're gonna copy line 100 and we'll let that crunch. And when I say the latest world database, it's the latest full world database release. It's going to update with more commits once we get further along here. So let's go ahead and copy line 102 in, which is extracting the SQL files. Now we are going to remove the compressed file since we don't need it anymore from line 104. Paste that in, hit enter. All right, now the magic begins. So we're gonna go with line 106 here. If you caught that really fast, you would have also noticed that I made some adjustments on the fly. Paste this in, hit enter. And so it's gonna go through with the scripting and it's going to double check that all these databases actually have the data they need in them. When it gets to the world database here, it could take some time as this is a huge amount of data that is being populated. And don't worry about this warning here saying using a password on the command line interface can be insecure. And like I said, just keep being patient as this is a huge amount of data. And now it's going to do the migration updates. Now it's gonna begin loading the world server. And we are doing things a little out of order here because how they have it built out is the world server is capable, as I'd mentioned, of building those databases and whatnot. So you'll see first kick off the world server, but the proper way of actually doing it once everything is built is to kick the BNet server off first and then kick off the world server once the BNet server has fully loaded. And so at this moment, we're just really testing things. So I'm going to go ahead and type in server space shutdown one. And now the world server has been shut down and we are going to copy in line 108, which is gonna kick off the BNet server. And this is more or less just to make sure that it is happy. So in its current state, everything looks okay here. There are no errors and it's active. We're gonna go ahead and do control C to halt the process. Give it a moment. If it doesn't shut itself down after about 10 seconds and do another control C to really kill it. Next, what we need to do is copy in line 110 here to go back into SQL and then type in your root SQL password again. We're gonna tell it that we wanna use the auth database in line 112, paste that in, hit enter. So now I'm gonna go over some information here. Let me expand this out to full screen. So what lines 114 to 160 are doing is that they are configuring the realm list table, which is the realm that you would log into. And so this is going to be an area that you will have to modify. So to go over it here, Everything kind of matches up. So top matches up to the bottom values here. So the ID is being set to one. You can leave that as default name. I have mine as Deathwing. You can change it to whatever you want, but this is going to be the realm name that you would see when you log into the game. 
Next up is going to be your address. This is actually the server's address, the IP address. So go ahead and change this out. This will be mandatory unless you just by a stroke of luck actually have this same exact IP on your server. Local address is going to be just as it is here. You should not have to adjust this. Local subnet mask, you may have to adjust. So, so double check it and make sure that this looks proper. Port 8085, leave it as is. As for icon, flag, time zone, allowed security level, and game build, I'm going to have a link in the description below which will go over that stuff. So time zone, you know, for the most part would be the time zone for your area that you would set it to. You're also going to be adjusting other variables for if you want PVE, PVP, RP, PVP, RP, PVE servers. So that's what all that there does. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and copy in line 114 and 116 here and paste it in. Hit enter. And now we can exit out of the SQL portion. And I'm going to scroll down here. So next up is actually starting the server to be fully operational. So I'm going to jump into the desktop experience, the GUI of the server to begin this process here. More diehard Linux people would probably just say, let's do it all in the terminal. But for me, or at least this demonstration, I want to show it in the GUI interface. So I'll log back in here. All right, so let's go to the top left activities terminal hit enter and i'll maximize this here so we need to change the directory so cd space forward slash and we can use the autocomplete function for this so if i hit o and then tab now auto completes it so we're going to do forward slash opt and then forward slash trinity core so we'll do capital t because the folder itself has a capital t in it hit tab and then forward slash S E tab, then B tab, hit enter. And now we can do sudo space period forward slash bnet server, hit enter. It's going to ask for your password, type it in, hit enter. All right. The bnet server is now up and running. It appears to be happy. Next, we are going to utilize this little button in the top left here, the little plus with the box. Click that. It's going to open a new tab within the terminal. If the directory is not showing, as it should, then it should once again just be the opt trinity core server forward slash bin. And now we can type in sudo space period forward slash world server. Hit enter. Type in your password. And just be patient as this loads. All right, so the world server is now loaded, which means at this point the server is fully up and running. A few things I do want to go over before we get into the next step here. So let's go ahead and scroll up here. The key thing is that we don't have any major errors in here. Really the only place that you would have serious problems would be around this section here. And usually it will halt continuing on if things are in really bad shape in this section. So everything looks good and that all looks fine. But the thing I wanted to mention is this right here. So this is just something I will reference in the server update portion when you want to bring this up to the latest commits, just to double check that this value actually changes. So I just wanted to mention that. Anyhow, let me scroll all the way back to the bottom. So by default, this server doesn't actually have any accounts on it yet. And so the process to create the accounts is a little bit different than what you may have seen if you had watched any of my previous videos as at this point in time, things have been altered to where the account is email based. So it would have an at, you know, gmail.com or something of that sort. And I do reference it here for account creation format for line 130 and 131. So in this case, you would type in bnet account space create space the account that you want it to be at whatever.com and then space the password. So you have the user account, and then you have the password here. So let me go ahead and build that out right now. So bnet account space create space test one at test.com space and then the password. We'll just make the password test. And then now you'll see here, it spits out battle.net account created, the account name with game account, 
very first game account here. Now, obviously, at this point, in order to actually play the game, you would need the game client. Now, my recommendation is if you take a look at the Cataclysm Preservation Project's GitHub page, it has breadcrumbs into how to download the 4.3.4 game client and also how to patch it. Now, for the patching process, it is a little on the confusing side, and I do have a video designated just for that, which I will have in the description below. So the key thing is before you actually begin watching the video, you will need the game client. And then once you have the game client, then my video goes over the whole patching process. Key thing is that it has to be a fresh client that has never been used with any other server before. And that is all referenced on the Preservation Project GitHub page. Now, one last thing I do want to just quickly go over, and I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video, but I just wanted to show it off. The reason as to why I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video is because this project at the moment has not had any commit updates in the past two weeks. And so I can't actually show the process in the video of actually upgrading the server. But it's very straightforward, self-explanatory, in lines 136 through 152. So you would just go into your terminal, copy paste that in. This here at 138 is going to make it so that Git does not complain as sometimes it will complain and not actually do a Git pull in this section here. So you do line 140 for the sudo Git pull. And then once that's done, line 142, change the directory to the build folder, run through CMake one more time for line 144, compile it with line 146. And of course, once again, be very patient as this compiles. And then once it's done compiling, then kick off line 148 for the sudo make install, and then kick off the change directory here in line 150, and then kick off the world server on line 152 here, which is going to run the scripts for doing your SQL migrations. Anyhow, that is all you need to do to compile your own World of Warcraft Cataclysm Patch 4.3.4 server using Debian Linux. If you found this video to be useful, please like it and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I try to release a new video every one to two weeks, but if you haven't already taken a peek at my current videos, you might find something hopefully interesting and useful. One last thing before I go, I'm looking for new video ideas that you might be interested in watching next. I invite you to leave a comment below on what you would like to see for content. I'm not exactly a miracle worker, but I'm always willing to give things a shot. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.